Hey folks, I'm your guys' host, Dakota Morton, coming to you from Phoenix, Arizona, your friendly neighborhood podcaster, animal caretaker, dinosaur enthusiast, and all the jazz like that. Today, I mean, you know, before I get started, I should let you guys know, we do a little bit of animal videos. Of course, we have Q here. I'm in my home, the room slash studio at the moment right here. I got Q, our rescue ball python, right over here in front of us. Just kind of hiding there in the corner, being all Q-like. Uh, we are here today because, you know what, every now and then we do animal videos on here. <clears throat> videos I take and put on TikTok and Instagram, or um, <clears throat> videos specially made for the channel involving exotic animals that I care for, like crocodiles, alligators, snakes, uh, reptiles, birds, all the stuff like that. Or, and I take the videos and I put them on here for you guys, for your entertainment. <laughs> Or stuff from when I worked at the Phoenix Zoo. So, today we're going to be going over something really, really cool. Um, I thought maybe this would be a good way to get it out there for things you should and should not do for ball pythons. Because I've seen a lot of things that people are doing that are wrong. So, <laughs> I wanted to put this out there for people who may enjoy this. Uh, we're doing the ins and outs of a ball python setup. Now, this is a 40-gallon tank. I understand. <laughs> Um, this 40 gallon tank here is pretty large, but this is something where you want to start with is if it's a ball python A 20 gallon tank will do but eventually they're gonna grow and whatnot too Plus wouldn't you want so of course you guys see the setup here. We do have Pedro who might come around here We got his food the uh, water a sprayer which we'll get to in a minute and of course his bed So if you guys see Pedro and it might be him You might see him there uh, One of the things is the snake will grow, you know, it, obviously it takes a while they live for a long time uh, when you have a ball python, but eventually it will grow and you're going to need a bigger uh, tank. Now, I started with a 20 and then moved up to a 40 gallon. Thankfully, everyone at my uh, little volunteer job at Phoenix Herp were able to give me this at a pretty good price. I put some stickers on it, of course, as well. One of these custom made ones on Etsy. And then, of course, as well, too, Croc Loki. Yes. Uh, so that is a thing to keep in mind. There will be a time. Let's get the brightness back up. There will be a time when you do have to upgrade your tank. That is later on, but. Starting with a 40 gallon tank, I think is the best way to go about it because it allows your snake to have exercise It allows your snake to Or reptile. I mean this can be considered for reptiles as well uh, It allows the animal to be able to roam be able to be free get the exercise climb uh, Move around be comfortable uh, All those things that make a happy healthy animal that you do want for your pet, right? If you're watching the video, of course you do so we're gonna dive into this here on the outside and then we're gonna move on the inside of the tank. Look at she's watching, she's like, Father, Father, what are you doing there? Oh, a hide there, which we'll get to in a minute. Oh, well, I should say this was recently cleaned, but due to the sprayer and some stuff as well, that tends to be a thing. So, you know, uh, 40 gallon tank, I get it, is a little bit of room, but make do with what you will about that. Like I said, we'll go to the inside and we'll talk about foam walls and such like that as well. Uh, outside of the tank, oh, I should make it clear too, this tank is looking weird because this is one where you actually have the ability to lock and unlock it on both sides there to make it so the drawer comes out on the bottom. I'm not gonna do it, but the black bar there where the stickers are, those guys, actually, there we go. The brightness going again. That actually comes out there. Once you take all the husbandry items out, you can take that out and change out your substrate. It makes life so much easier, which is why there's a black trim, of course. Excuse me, along the base there. So, outside as well, you're going to want a heat lamp. Now, the heat lamp, this is one of the bigger ones. I do have a 100 watt, 150 watt, I believe, in here. Uh, for heat lamp, for just a heat light, to make sure the temperature is correct in there. It should be around 80 to 90 degrees at all times inside the tank. Uh, and we'll get to humidity in a minute, but it should be that uh, temperature for the tank at almost all times. I almost touch that and burn myself. Ignore that. Uh, and of course, though, UVB is very important, especially for your ball python or any reptile. Uh, UVB light we have in here. I make it easier on myself. I have the heat lamp on one side, which you should always have. One side of the tank is going to have the heat lamp to be able to uh, make one side hotter that the snake is going to want to go into a little bit more as well as create the temperature and flow through temperature and you're going to want one side somewhat cooler for the animal for the snake which is why you're going to have a uvb one there now we got the i got a double one here from zoom ed for these guys which are fancier and that allows me to click it but one side is uvb light and then one side so the uvb rays are actually very very necessary i will show you guys what the other one is can... now exclude that Nighttime heat lamp. And I'll go ahead and do that for you guys. 
light shine in there. You can probably see me in the reflection there. But I got a nighttime lamp bulb in there as well. The red one it, uh, amplifies the heat in this in there compared to the blue. So keep that in mind as well. You do want a nighttime heat lamp in there. Uh, the red bulb is not a 24-7 heat bulb what i've seen so many people do they just grab it they give them a red bulb and they say have a good day and that is false do not do that make sure you have uvb and heat lamps on for the day nighttime the red heat lamp as well for your ball python who a lot of them do sit around most of the day and then come out at night which i think is pretty cool still so make sure you take that in consideration as well to have that nighttime lamp as well as the heat and UVB because the snake does need the UVB rays in order to make sure it is healthy. It doesn't get any worms. It doesn't get uh, stuck shed. It can help out with the shedding process as well. So a lot, a lot of good things for the UVB. Now the heat lamp as well too. Make sure we're going to go on the inside here. We're going to go on a tour through the little latch here in a minute. But in order to make it a little bit easier there, um, I'm going to show you guys the water dishes here. I have two water dishes one in the corner a little bit dirty because she was running around here like a maniac a minute ago and of course now she doesn't for when i record a video but that's fine so water dishes are something you're going to make sure you have water in and one at least close to your main heat lamp due to the and one by the uvb due to the fact it creates humidity you want at least 70 to 80 percent humidity in here at all times that's pretty high but you want to make sure you do that and how you do that is you have the water dishes next to there next to the heat lamp so that causes that and of course you have an empty difty sprayer so i got one of these from walmart 15 20 bucks one gallon you fill it up you open the su uh, sucker up you open whatever i just opened the little hatch here the little manhole cover whoop, do that and you spray the whole whoop, got my finger there you spray the whole entire exhibit in there your walls that we have up there so your sides your uh, plant, your base as well. Make sure you soak everything in there. Soak it. I got some cork uh, in the wood as well in there and some other wood. You soak everything in there so it soaks throughout the day and it creates a humidity. I am filming this later in the day so it's a little bit more dried out as well. So you want to make sure you have that. Now, I'm, I mentioned the walls. We're going to talk about the walls here for a minute. Uh, I have some. I had to custom make some of these and cut them down a little bit. And you can tell this one here needs to be realigned. But there is a little bit of space between the side here, the corner, and the, and the wall. So that being said, is because it is a custom made thing. I had to cut off the base on the on a, on the back of the back foam as well. Two different companies, as you can tell, with the gray, as well as the uh, back side is uh, more of a tan kind of color. These are just made to look like rock, made to look like terrain. I got them from PetSmart. Uh, you can make your own if you wish to do. Make sure you use non toxic paint. Uh, but I decided to do this until I make this a bioactive enclosure, which is a video we'll do one other day, <laughs> to say the least. So I believe that, and it does help as well too, for my caretaking expertise, I've seen this a lot, that if you put up an enclosure of the walls in there, no matter, even if it's just one, it helps your snake behaviorally a lot more than you think. It'll make it so the animal feels comfortable, it'll make it so the animal feels more secure, and feels more safe in the enclosure, so that way, although she's not going to be doing it now because, of course, that's how she rolls, uh, makes it so they roam around the enclosure, they feel safe and secure, they don't have a billion things coming at them. Yeah, they got one giant side, but that's about it. Uh, so we have here the fact being of the walls and also keeps inside, it also keeps your heat insulated as well as keeping your humidity insulated as well, too. So there is that. Now, speaking of happy and healthy snakes, you're going to want two hides. Even though you can't really tell from this angle here, you can kind of vaguely see the hole in there. We'll take a tour to the inside in a minute from what she sees. And, of course, it ties into the heat lamp here. You do want two hides. Now, I do have a couple different hides. This one over here on the cooler side is a little bit more open because that's okay. She feels more comfortable. It's safe, secure, and whatnot as well. I wanted to get something that would be more wild for her instead of just some standard you like upside like sideways or half a tree trunk or whatever those little hides are i don't prefer really like those those are just pretty standard the animals really feel comfortable so spend the extra few dollars and get something more satisfactory and that looks good in your exhibit as well too so there is that uh if you go in take a look here 
I did make it so I did get one that was kind of a tree-esque, plant-esque sort of idea on there to make it so it was a little bit more comfortable for her. And she'll climb around it as well to get the exercise she needs to do. So one's on the cooler side at all times. And then you have one on the heater side. So this is, yes, this is a hide. This is a reptile hide in the hair. So she will stay inside there. And one of the things that I did not get, but it is very necessary because I'm in the process, I just redid her tank. So I, I'm in the process of getting moss because my pet stores are sold out. Is you're gonna want moss in here. I know it's kind of productive because I don't have any at the moment, but moss is gonna be something you're gonna want to have, especially in here to help with the shedding process, which is why we have one underneath the heat lamp because it will get more hot in there more humid and with the moss make it really really easy for your snake to be able to shed her skin because that helps with the humidity a lot she'll rub against it or he will rub against it and be able to get the skin off so much easier as well which is something you desperately want because you want to make sure your snake sheds because if not it causes a lot of medical issues a lot a lot of medical issues so always have two hides in there recommend one more enclosed on the heater side have one a little bit more open on the other one but make it more natural for him which is why I got these trees. Tree plant ass things. Kind of going on that side now, we are gonna be taking a look at, of course, I do have them hanging. Uh, I did have one kind of plant in there as well too, but I have it hanging here is different types of fake plastic rubber-esque plants. Really don't really do too much other than make the animal feel more comfortable, make it feel more natural in here for the animal. Water will stay on there for only a little bit compared to the other stuff that's in here. So, it, you know, it's really something that you want to do. You want to make it look natural. Your animal's not just a show and tell thing. Your animal needs its habitat and it needs its life. That's your Q here, who's already been to the vet a couple different times because she was a pet smart rescue. God, that's a story for another time um, for when I worked at the animal hospital, but she, the exotic animal hospital, I should say. So we had that here. We have all this. We have the natural plants in here to make it more comfortable, make it more relaxing for her, which she does enjoy. And your snake will go through and go on to the plants and try to explore them and see what's going around as, as well. Uh, one of the things in here too to be sure of is, you know, decorations. Of course I have two Jurassic Park uh, in little decorations kind of in the back there. Don't really add much for the animal. They're kind of out of the way, but they still add a little bit of fun flair to it. Uh, the wood piece in here that you may see running along there, that is actually cork made to look like a log of wood. That will actually help out with moisture, humidity, as long as you put enough water in there with the sprayer, that will help out with moisture and humidity a lot as long as you soak that down. Plus the animal can climb it, which I've seen Q do. He, the animal can climb it, the animal will feel comfortable with it and make it a little bit more easier and feel more real world-esque compared to just fake plants in here which is why we have spider wood in here as well too. Um, I recommend spider wood and get it for aquatic stuff and reptile tanks. Uh, I don't see it too often in reptile tanks, but I usually try to get the spider wood in here to help out with her feeling more comfortable with real wood in here on her scales as well to help. So it's not just plastic and then the substrate, which we'll get to in a second, but it makes it more comfortable and it gives the snake the exercise because one problem we have as Americans, us being fat, um, of course, I'm in Phoenix, Arizona, so let me tell you, yes, um, is we have an overweight issue, but all of most of our pet snakes are overweight because we don't give them the proper amount of exercise. And how to do that is to create a habitat like this. In between the two hides is a little bit of stuff to climb over. These snakes may find it intimidating at first if they've never encountered anything like it, but eventually they'll have to climb over everything. You try to uh, feed them one side, one uh, with the mouse or rat, depending on how big it is, on the other side of the tank in order to get them so they go around, get the exercise as well too for the food. So that makes on your life so much easier. And plus it adds, like I said, a lot more natural aesthetic. Now we're getting to the substrate here, folks, is the substrate is something you're gonna wanna make sure is pristine. It's gonna be something you're gonna really, really want because otherwise your snake will be unhappy and also unhealthy. It will be very, very unhealthy because the right substrate will cause it so your worm doesn't I mean, your snake doesn't get worms, it doesn't get flagellate, it doesn't get anything like that. So the substrate I have in here is a good mixture. You can either do Repta Bark or Repta Dirt. And that's one of the ones I recommend. Uh, I was doing more Repta Bark and with a little, with a two parts Repta Bark, one part Repta, Repta Soil or Repta, Repta Dirt, depending on which ones you want to get. But it is something that is reptile specialized dirt with some certain, uh, certain type of soil in there to make sure it doesn't negatively affect your animal as well as give them a little bit of nutrients and stuff as, as well. 
uh, the bark in there they do appreciate and it helps with their scales too. Uh, I do a mixture of more nowadays. I do it more soil than rep to bark and may go to soil. You can do one or the other. It's totally up to you. More Some people prefer the rep to bark. Some people prefer rep to soil. I prefer a little bit of both on there to help out, make the animal more comfortable, make it more happy, make it seem more environmentally correct, to say the least. You're going to say that with a Jurassic Park gate in the back. Uh, but yes, and so that is one thing to make sure. Make sure it's water daily. Make sure you moist the habitat as well. <laughs> that, that just triggered a lot of people. Uh, make sure you guys wet down the habitat daily with a sprayer as well too. Uh, feed once a week, I would say. Once a week is definitely something you want to just look at there. Uh, depending on the size of your animal, it could be two times a week, but most snakes are going to be one day a week that you're going to want to feed and make sure they have everything they need in here and the correct amount of heat, humidity, because you, if they don't have it, their digestion period is going to be shit. And if you do not know, um, when you are handling a snake as well, you get, after you do feed them, you give them 24 hours to properly digest the, the food in there. Otherwise, when you grab them, you will actually do damage to the animal. And I don't think you want to pay that vet bill. So <laughs> vet bills are very expensive in 2022. So uh, whatever year it is anymore. Keep that in mind, folks, as well, that you do not want to handle your snake within 24 hours of feeding because that will cause some bone damage. It's like after you eat a huge meal, do you want to get, you're in a food coma. Nobody wants to, you don't want to get touched by anybody. You don't want to hug or cuddle or anything. You just want to sit down and digest, right? Same with snakes. And I believe that is actually about it on that. Uh, unless you are comfortable with it, I would not recommend more than two snakes at a time, but those snakes got to be cohabited with each other as well before you start putting them in there. And that's a whole behavioral thing, too, to make sure that they don't start attacking each other or slash mating. So there, keep that in mind as well. And, all right, before we end the video here, guys, I just want to say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me on this. And hopefully you found some very good information here for what you do need to do uh, for your animal. I do recommend, though, too, for doing snakes and, of course, ball pythons, which this is mostly focused on, make sure after you do clean it out, Every other week, I like to do it every other week. Do a deep, excuse me, deep clean, as well as a substrate train, substrate change, and everything along those sides. And as well to about every couple of days, give a very good soak for your animal to make sure she's get, he or she is getting the proper soaking in there for their scales for their body to help with shedding. And then they really do need the moisture, believe it or not. So to double check on that, so every couple of days as well. But when you do do a deep clean, make sure you do change everything here. Don't put it the exact same. Mix it up a little bit. That behaviorally helps out your animal more than you may think. It helps your animal out very, very much mentally and physically as well for their exercise. Phys mentally, it's for stability as well. And exploring, get them to move, get them to think, get them to move around. It's really, really good habitat change for your animal to do it every other time. Or technically every time when you do a uh, habitat change. So let's go and dive in here for Q. Let's see what we got. All right, QQ. You gonna be good for the people of YouTube? Q. Hello. Hey, sweetheart. Yeah. This is Q's world. Might actually watch this part of the video because I never really do. But yeah. There you go. As I said, it is a hide. But that is about it, guys. Ladies and gentlemen. Thank you guys. Whew. My Jurassic collection there with other stuff. Thank you guys for joining us on the video. Hopefully you guys find it very interesting or, you know what, very, very informative. Stay tuned for more animal stuff here on the channel because between being an EAMT and also working in a wildlife rescue for reptiles, you're going to see a lot of stuff here. So stay tuned for more of that, folks. Subscribe on the channel. Leave a like if you guys enjoyed it. Comment down below the things you do differently or you think that I'm doing wrong. Uh, this is years of expertise coming in. So uh, and I can take the hit. You guys all rock, everybody. Thanks for joining me on this episode. And, of course, stay creative, everyone. And make sure you keep animals safe, will you?